Hello, friends. Today is Israeli Independence Day, Yom Ha'atzma'ut. With the war still raging in Gaza and campus unrest around this issue all over the United States, it is a bittersweet celebration this year. So many of us remember how wonderful this day was throughout most of our lives. In my own youth, in Cleveland, Ohio, the entire Jewish community would gather for this celebration. Israel was our modern day miracle rising out of the ashes of the Shoah. Didn't matter which party was in power in Israel, this was a day that transcended political issues, partisan politics. The gift of Israel has always been worth celebrating and it still is. We can still be mourning the losses of October 7th. We, we can still be praying for the return of the hostages. We can still be saddened by the ongoing deaths of Israeli soldiers in Gaza and also be saddened by the tragic loss of tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians heartlessly sacrificed by their Hamas leaders. Just recently, a new Hillel International Poll of American Jewish College students reported that half of the Jewish college students say anti-Israel protests disrupted their classes. A quarter say they faced physical or verbal assault. A fifth of the respondents say they were physically blocked from attending class, with almost a third saying the demonstrations and made them scared to attend classes or even be on campus. 11% said they were considering transferring to a different school because of the demonstrations. The anti-Israel campus protests and encampments have made it harder to, quote, learn, study, or concentrate, with many classes canceled, interrupted, or moved to Zoom. A majority of the respondents, 61%, said that there was, there's been anti-Semitic, threatening, or derogatory language directed towards Jewish people during protests at their school. Since October 7th, Hillel has said that it has recorded nearly 1,600 incidents of anti-Semitism on campus. The protests have triggered vigorous debates across the country and around the world over anti-Semitism, free speech, academic freedom, and the role of universities. Donors, particularly Jewish ones, have increasingly begun pausing their donations to certain universities over their administration's responses to the encampments. 40% of the total respondents said they felt a need to hide their Jewish identity. And 32% said they were scared to attend Jewish related activities on campus. One quarter said professors had said something anti-Semitic or anti-Israel to them. And 17% said they believed faculty treated them differently, quote, because I am Jewish or because how I feel about Israel, end quote. After the recent poll, Adam Lehman, president and CEO of Hill International said in a statement, quote, our findings demonstrate that a majority of Jewish students surveyed have experienced bias and discrimination in their classroom and academic experiences based on faculty and staff abusing their authority in support of the rule breaking and unlawful anti-Israel encampments and protests. Jewish students and all students deserve to pursue their education and celebrate their graduations free from disruption, anti-Semitism, and hate." End quote. Actually, I want to include one, one other statement that Mr. Lehman uh, Said, he said, university leaders are legally required to address these hostile and discriminatory conditions 
and we will continue ins to insist that they do so for the benefit of Jewish students and all students. We'll stop there, end quote. My friends, we are living in strange and disturbing times. I have read countless articles trying to explain why Hamas has become, become a cause celeb at so many American college campuses. Even if you pile all the rationales together, it still doesn't make sense to me and so many others. As Tom Friedman wrote recently in a New York Times article entitled, Why the Campus Protests Are So Troubling, he wrote, by giving Hamas a pass, the protests have put the onus on Israel to such a degree that its very existence is a target for some students, while Hamas's murderous behavior is passed off as a praiseworthy adventure in decolonization. He continues, they are arguing that the Jewish people have no right to self-determination or self-defense. Further on, he states, Hamas, la Hamas launched this war without permission from the Gazan population and without preparation for Gazans to protect themselves. But Hamas knew that a brutal Israeli response would follow. In fact, a Hamas official said that at the start of the war, its tunnels were only for its fighters, not civilians. My friends, in the midst of this madness, we need to celebrate Israel's independence. We need to affirm the Jewish people's right to self-determination. We need to lift up the miracle that created a Jewish state that has been a source of pride for Jewish people all over the world and for our allies and friends. We don't have to agree with all of the actions of any government in Israel, just like some of us don't agree with the decisions of the current Biden government and some of us took great issue with the decisions of the Trump, Trump government before it. Doesn't mean that we're ready to demand the, the United States cease to exist and that we're not proud of so much of what the United States has accomplished since our own independence. Israel is the dream come true for a vast majority of the Jewish people. Let us celebrate today, 76 years barely a single human lifetime for most since the creation of the state of Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. May the people of Israel live. Ken Yihiratzon, so may it be. Stay safe and be well. Shalom uvracha, peace and blessings.